Merci bien, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Let me start my statement by this piece of information that I suppose should uh, is worthy of your attention, especially Ms. Muller and Ms. Four. The other day, the authorities of the Turkish occupation cut the potable water supply from Hasaka and the surrounding villages. Potable water that is supplied by a plant called Aluk, Aluk, knowing that this very plant is the one and only source to ensure potable water to Hasaka. By the way, Hasaka is located in the northeast, northeastern Syria, not uh, and not uh, northwestern. Hasaka is populated by 600,000 people. 600,000 people. Uh, all of them, by the way, are civilians and they are mostly women and children. This crime is similar to the crimes perpetrated by terrorist groups in the suburbs of Damascus, which uh, in 2014, and they are supported by Turkey and Qatar, but by the way, they were eradicated by the Syrian Arab army. Thus, this most recent Turkish crime is no different from those crimes that were perpetrated by terrorist organizations in Damascus in 2012 when they throw uh, uh, oil barrels in the spring of the Fiji, uh, of the Fiji Spring, and this is the main source of potable water to Damascus. Damascus was populated by 8 million people. Okay. We just wanted you to remain seized of this matter. Mr. President, four highlight positions are very noteworthy under the Belgian presidency of the Security Council during this month. The first of which is the endeavor by certain member states to transform this Security Council into a NATO platform to support the Turkish aggression and to level threats against my country in violation of the provisions of the Charter and which eventually undermines the role of the Security Council, which is mainly to maintain international peace and security. By the way, this happened in public uh, during the session that was held on 6th of February. The second highlight position is uh, what was said by the permanent representative of the Israeli occupying power when he said that it's important and necessary to get rid physically, to get rid of the president, the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, as a sine qua non of what he calls peace, which is a flagrant threat of liquidation of the Palestinian or the president of the state of Palestine under the dome of this council. The third position is represented in the response by the, uh, by the response of the prime minister, the Israeli prime minister, to a question related to the attacks launched by his air forces against my country, Syria, Syria on 14th of February. Netanyahu said, and by the way, Mr. President, this is very important for you and for your country. Netanyahu said that these operations and attacks that were launched by the uh, air forces might be the act of the Belgian Air Force. As for the fourth position, it is represented in the USG Mr. Lecoq, who styled himself as the propagandist of misleading charades which only aim to undermine the government of my country and which violate the requirements of his mandate, taking, in a, taking advantage of the self-imposed isolation by some by shutting down their embassies in Damascus as well as the geographical distance of some others and the inadequate knowledge sometimes of the external interventionist trolls that have catastrophic consequences on our region for decades. The representative of St. Vincent was very right in her political analysis. So notwithstanding the, f uh, and this is notwithstanding the fact, or notwithstanding the geographical distance between St. Vincent and Grenadines and Syria, and that they do not have an embassy in Damascus. And I uh, call upon you uh, to, or I invite you actually, to take a page from her book. 
uh, Mr. President, by the way, we are not falsely accusing Mr. Lecoq. And let me here mention only one example of the very misleading approach in which OCHA is, sunk, is sinking, namely the neglect by the USG, and today also Ms. Muller neglected this very same point. The Secretary General, uh, in his statement to your council on 19th of February, he neglected that uh, two humanitarian workers in the British Humanitarian Oxfam organization, namely Wissam Hazim and Adel Halabi. They were martyred. They were martyred a few days ago uh, during undertaking the in humanitarian work in the government of Dara. And again, we would like to pay our heartfelt condolences to their families and colleagues. These are two Syrian citizens who were killed in cold blood by armed terrorist groups that consistently impede humanitarian work the efforts of the Syrian government and the partners thereof to deliver humanitarian aid to the people who need the same. These groups are but terrorist organizations, which Mr. Lecoq still insists to, uh, to, um, to depict them as non-state armed opposition or non-state actors, whereas they are propagated by others as jihadist organizations. Mr. President, the Syrian Arab army together with, it, with their uh, allies managed to defeat uh, by, de by the defeat exact exacted a defeat on the uh, terrorist groups in Idlib and their paymasters and thus they allowed millions of Syrians in Aleppo to restore their feeling of safety and jubilation due to the delivery of their city from the onslaught of wrath and terrorism and we, we started to reoperate the international Aleppo uh, airport and no doubt that uh, the work of the uh, Syrian government and the allies thereof in countering terrorism in Idlib is but a constitutional and national task and it is also uh, an, um, an exact implementation of the Security Council uh, resolutions and out of our keenness on the security and safety of our citizens and taking a number and after taking a number of initiatives the government of Syria calls um, the Syrian citizens who fled from their homes to return to the liberated areas northwestern of Syria. And the Syrian government stressed its commitment to uh, guarantee the safety and security and protection thereof and to provide them with all required basic needs. We do call upon the states which have leverage over the Turkish regime and their affiliated terrorist groups to bring them to allow our citizens to come back to Syria and to return one million Syrians who were displaced owing to the Turkish aggression from their cities of Minbij, Ifrin, Tal Rifat, Jarablus, Ain al Arab, and other cities. My country reiterates its call to UN entities to provide prompt to, pro to promptly provide humanitarian aid to these and to those citizens instead of only uh, making statements and briefings which are not honestly reflecting the reality and which uh, only contribute to create cover for terrorist organizations and their sponsoring governments mr president we have informed you of our disappointment uh, owing to the reluctance by the WHO to import the me uh, medical consignment which is outstanding in Iraq, notwithstanding the authorization that was given to the WHO by the Syrian government on the 29th of January, which is more than one month ago. We authorized the delivery of this or the access of this consignment through the Bukamal crossing and the government of my country has on the 22nd of February sent a message to the regional director of the WHO informing the same of its readiness to cooperate with the Iraqi authorities to transfer this aid, this aid to Syria through the Bukamal crossing or any other legal official crossing including airports and Tartus and Ladiqiyya ports. On 25th of February, the government of my country also informed the WHO of its authorization and approval of transferring this, a one-time transportation of this aid through the Arbil uh, 
uh, airport in Iraq to El Kamishli Airport, uh, northeastern Syria, provided the same is distributed under the supervision of the Syrian Arab Red Crescent and Syrian governmental authorities uh, and in partnership with the United Nations. And yesterday, we have informed the Secretary General and the Security Council President together with the member states of the same. And unfortunately, and notwithstanding all the foregoing, Ms. Muller, Ms. Muller and Ms. Four remain ignorant of all this information and they failed to inform you of even a piece of this information in the briefings today. Ms. Muller, uh, she uh, mentioned Ali Arubiya crossing 11 times, 11 times, 11 it was mentioned 11 times in her briefing, although, according to your very resolution, the Security Council resolution closed this crossing. However, she mentioned it 11 times. And then she said that the Tal Abyad is the most viable and logical option. And then she attributed this to the, Secre the Secretary General's report, and this is not true, because the SG's report did not say that Tal Abyad is the most logical option it mentioned as the um, uh, the um, representative of the russian federation said the report gives alternatives for based on the coordination with the government of syria for the delivery of aid from damascus and anywhere in the country this is according to the report and not what miss muller said mr president we would like to recall that cooperation between the government of Syria, the United Nations, and the entities thereof, as well as our partners from foreign NGOs, which are 38, and with the national NGOs, which uh, are 1,400, enabled us for years, for the years of what is called crisis. This enabled us to continue to deliver humanitarian aid, uh, psychosocial support, um, uh, health care, and basic services to millions of Syrians who live in places which, uh, which are classified by the United Nations as uh, uh, um, out of the control of the Syrian government or uncontrolled by the Syrian government. And this is reiterated in paragraph 22 of the SG's report number 65 regarding the implementation of humanitarian resolutions and which indicates the delivery by the Syrian government and the United Nations together uh, of uh, food aid to more than 3.5 million people monthly in areas which are called uh, areas controlled by the government and the northeastern of Syria. What does this mean? This means that that, uh, the, that delivery is viable uh, to the northeastern part of the country from within the uh, borders uh, without any need for antagonization or politicization of uh, humanitarian aid and uh, without need for any crossings that were mentioned in resolution 2504 and which are instrumentalized by the Erdogan regime to become crossings for his military machinery and troops. And I would like to inform you of the authorization and approval by the government of my country to transport aid through contact lines to the areas uh, of need in Syria, provided the same arrive or are delivered exclusively to the Syrians who need the same and to guarantee the same will not end up in the hands of terrorist groups or illegal armed groups or any proxy militias or illegal political organizations. The same should be also distributed under the supervision of the Syrian state, the Syrian Arab Red Crescent and partners from the United Nations. And the government of my country has sent a message uh, yesterday to Mr. Omran, the resident coordinator of UN activities in Syria, in northern Syria, where we informed him of our authorization of, transfer, of transferring the medical aid through land routes uh, throughout the country, especially after liberating the highway between Damascus and Aleppo, as well as other international highways from the armed terrorist groups, which are supported by the Erdogan regime. The liberation of these highways is a milestone that serves humanitarian aid and delivery of aid to citizens who need the same in my country. 
and all those who try to foist upon us a different picture or explanation by way of like calling for ceasefire and negotiation with the Daesh and uh, the Nostra Front in Idlib. They are either ignorant or not privy to what is really going on in Syria or are directly supporting terrorism and they are responsible for the bloodshed of Syrians. Why haven't Western countries uh, negotiated? I'm here talking about everybody, starting from the United States to everybody else. Why haven't you negotiated with bin Laden and Zarqawi and Baghdadi and Julani for ceasefire? for ceasefire with their terrorist entities because, because if uh, the crust of the matter is ceasefire then why haven't you negotiated? Why haven't the United States negotiated with bin Laden and Baghdadi and Zarqawi and Julani and others? Mr. President, Syria reiterates her categorical refusal of illegal foreign presence Turkish or otherwise, British, French or otherwise, if it's illegal on Syrian territories and we call for restraining the aggression by the Turkish regime and their unlimited support of terrorism in Syria, Libya, the African Horn and other places. And we call for halting all Israeli aggression which conveniently occurred to mitigate the pressure on terrorist groups and to lend support to the Turkish aggression which uncovers the aggression harmony and alliance between the Turkish regime and the Israeli occupation of my country. Thank you, Mr. President.